Okay, we're continuing with the with the case feeder project for a Dillon 650. So what I'm doing right now is making sure that these connectors for the wiring harness that I built will fit. Uh, well, not fit. I'm sort of determining the hole sizes that I need to mount the different uh, the controls. So I have this on off switch here. So I took a piece of scrap plastic. I'm using this uh, poly at this uh, what is this acrylic? It's a acrylic sheeting. It looks like it's about a an eighth inch thick. And I'm using that for the covers for the case feeder. Uh, yeah, let's start with that. So here's the case feeder as it currently exists. So everything is mounted. Those holes are all recessed so that the shell plate can rotate inside of there and not come in contact with those bolts and screw heads. So this is a MDF material here for this, this uh, cover, the shroud, and that's covering the motor. So what's going to cover these openings are this plastic that I bought. And um, I just painted it on one side. And so the side that's facing here is the non-painted side, so it won't, so the paint won't scratch off. But at least it'll have some color. So this is how it's going to mount. So this surface right here has to be free because this is where the the funnel, when the sh shells fall through this hole, they're going to funnel. There's going to be a funnel built into here that's going to connect with the the Dillon um, tube that uh, drops the shells into the press. So this surface can't have any controls on it. So. So because this thing is going to basically live in this kind of configuration, it's going to be fairly high, I'm planning on putting the controls on this surface right here. So this is a piece of scrap material that's the same thickness as the control panel. So what I'm doing is uh, experimenting with, with the hole sizes for the on-off switch and my little speed controller here that I'm going to be using. So here's the back side of it. So to cut these holes I'm using, uh, especially this one for the on off switch, I'm using these things called Foster Bits. I bought these for a set of these things from Harbor Freight. So the hole that's for the on off switch is a Foster Bit and the size of that hole is come on I hate when this phone doesn't focus the way I want it to I don't understand it it's it's a 7 sixteenths or is it 7 eighths I can't eh crap Okay, I'll, I'll just tell you what size it is because this freaking phone is not going to cooperate. This is 7 8 foster bit. <clears throat> Here's what a foster bit looks like. And, man, Jesus Christ. I do not understand why this phone's not working. Anyway. <clears throat> This thing is set to autofocus, but it's not working, uh, apparently. Um, I'm sorry about that. That's what a foster bit looks like. <clears throat> so it's got these cutters on it, so it'll cut a, a large <clears throat> diameter hole. And because of these cutters, it cuts a nice smooth holes. Unlike those uh, blade, uh, those blade bits that you use to cut a hole in a door, 
you don't want to use those because that'll tear up this plastic. These things cut a really nice, uh, really nice smooth hole, and that's kind of what you want. So anyway, so it's a seven eighths foster bit for this on off switch. And I had to take a, uh, it wasn't perfect by any means, <clears throat> have to take a round nose file and kind of go along the inside of it just to kind of open it up just a little bit so this thing would fit. Um, so and this hole is just a standard 3 8 hole to, you know, to fit a standard, uh, thread for you know a hole for that type of um, control knob so <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut these holes into this piece and I'm gonna, probably gonna put them on this side as opposed to center them put it on this side and I'll have uh, some vents here because this motor you know tends to get a little warm I think when you run it for a while, but it won't be running continuously, only when the shells are needed. So maybe I won't need the vent hole at all. But the <clears throat> the Dillon 650 uh, case feeder does have vents in this portion of the the housing, and they're using an identical motor to this. If you look at the breakout view of the Dillon 650 case feeder, and you'll see. A, uh, an illustration of the motor this is the kind of motor they're using it's a low power RPM high torque gear motor <clears throat> so you know it gets a little warm I think if at, at, on, upon continuous use and they, then uh, Dylan has a couple of slots here for vents so I may or may not do that so we'll see so anyway so this is my completed wiring harness you probably notice that there's no harness for there's no part of the harness for this um, limit switch. Well, I bought this thing on eBay, but it's it it takes a little bit too much pressure to move this thing. So the weight of a nine millimeter case, for example, would not actuate this motor. I mean this this switch. So I need to find another limit switch to use. This one won't do. However, since this is all 120 volts, I'm not using any uh, step-down transformers. I don't know whether or not I can find a 120 volt limit switch with the with the sensitivity I need, um, so that the weight of weight of the cases will actuate this thing. This one won't. This takes way too much pressure to actuate it even way out to the end here where leverage would you know be applied it still takes it, it still takes more pressure than is needed so that's kind of the downside of this I haven't discovered a switch that I can use and maybe I'll buy a switch from Dylan you know and cheat <laughs> we'll see so anyway, so this is where we are so far in the in the process. I'm pretty happy with with the way this is turning out. Um, let me reiterate, this is the bucket. This is a five gallon bucket from um, Walmart. So apparently Walmart and Dylan. That's a pretty good match, I'd say. Look at that. That's Walmart blue and w Dylan blue. Almost identical. Right? So, <clears throat> next time we come back, uh, I have the holes built into this and I'll start fitting the controls into the housing. I gotta find a place f for this. This is the power block. And I'll probably put that on the, build that into the side or someplace I don't think I'll do it here but then I'm then again I might I might just put that right down there yeah It'd be easier to cut into this stuff than it was to try to cut a square hole into this MDF 
especially for this size it's kind of a weird kind of a weird size and the thin FDF would work well with these little with these little keepers right here so yeah I'll probably end up just putting the hole right into this thing and uh, mounting that like right down there and these two controls for the um, for the speed control and the on off switch will be right there roughly okay so when we come back uh, I'll have that done uh, so one thing I haven't done yet is to cut the shell plates yet and I also have to come up with a um, uh, way to rotate this tube, uh, I mean this this spindle with the shaft so that it comes in contact and turns the shell plates. I'm thinking I'm just going to put a square spindle in here and then cut a square hole in the center of the shell plates and let this be the key, that square hole be the key. So I'll put a square block on here, drill through it and put a um, a roll pin or something in there to hold it to hold the square block the spin the square spindle on here and then just drop the shell plates on top of that and have that square spindle be the driver to rotate this thing um, so that's the plan we'll see how well that works in the long run but in the meantime uh, I'm working to get this this uh, wiring harness all installed these are the connectors to the motor itself so anyway so that's where we are so far